the crushing. The crushing, the Shabbat. No one wants to be crushed. No one wants to go through pain. Everybody would have a baby if you could go through without the pain, amen? We would have men getting in line if you could just have a son without going through the pains. Isn't that something that women are made to hold the pain and men just faint? They couldn't hardly stand. They get a, they get a little cut. I love you men, but y'all get a little cut and y'all just faint. Just, it's just over. Most men have to run out of the, the labor room when the women start really going in the pain. They can't stand it. The doctor's helping them and turn around helping the men. But I'm with you, baby. I'm with you all the way. I'm going to be there all the way to the end. <laughs> I love you, man. I love you. When Shabbat is placed on you or the crushing, it means crushed, broken, pounded, destroyed. The word Shabbat also means to bring to birth. Everything is about this birthing process. So part of your crushing is to bring you to birth. So we run from being crushed. We run from being bruised. We run from br being broken. But we've asked God, God, please answer my prayers. Answer my prayers. And so when we ask God, when we pray to God, the Shabbat moment is the answer to the prayer. I say, God, use me anywhere you want to use me around the world. Father, I'm yours for the asking. Do with me as you will. He said, all right. You've now stepped into your Shabbat moment. The bruise, the crushing, the rejection. The hell. So I couldn't run from the test because I had asked for it. Watch what you ask for. You just might get it. You just might get it. But anybody who's ever pressed olives or seen the press of the olives, the richness of the oil is never manifest until after the crushing. After the crushing. And there's a process. You step and you smash the olives. Then there's another process that smashes them. Then there's the final process. And that's when all of the chemicals and the olives are released. And then you get the aroma of the oil in it. So you'll see yourself going through three trimesters of crushing. And so you're ready to get up and run with the vision after the first crusher. He says, no, I'm not finished yet. Come back. They prophesy you're going to be apostle. You run to get your business cards ready to preach. Get back on the altar. But I got a word. My word is better than the apostles and the prophets because I spend time in God's presence. Get back on the altar. Pride cometh before a fall, the Bible says. The grapes, the richness of the grape juice of the wine is never found until after the third process when the chemicals are released in the grapes. Remember when Jesus turned the water into wine and they said, you saved the best for last because his hands had touched it to cause metamorphosis, transformation to become the best. And anything God touches, anything the son of God touches is the best, is the best. God has his hand on you, and so you're the best. You're the best. Pressure is part of the process. Let me talk about these few points of, of, of the process. 2 Corinthians 8, 2 says, Fierce troubles came down on the people of those churches, pushing them to the very limit. The trial exposed their true colors. I'm reading in the, in the Message Bible. It says, the pressure triggered something totally unexpected. Fierce troubles triggered, exposed the Christians' true colors. Fears, not just troubles, but fierce troubles. Pressure comes to birth submission out of you. 
It says, submit yourselves to every ordinance of men for the Lord's sake, whether it be a king as supreme or unto governors, for so is the will of God. James 4, 7 says to submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Pressure comes to birth, submission out of you. I don't know about you, but the church today, you don't have submitted people. They will not submit to authority. They come from a church where they were the leader. They want to come into your church, taking over. Sit down somewhere. Two, pressure comes to birth, willingness out of you. Luke 14, 33 says in the Message Bible, simply put, if you're not willing to take what is dearest to you, whether plans or people, and kiss it goodbye, you cannot be my disciples. Galatians 5, 22 says, but what happens when we live God's way? And I put in parenthesis, through the process of developing fruit, we and the rest of the scripture says, develop a willingness to stick to things. I don't know about you, but in our churches, we got people that are run for the gusto at the beginning. You turn around and wonder where they are, they're gone. Or they're somewhere sitting. Someone say they're going to serve me and then I have to turn around and pick up behind myself. And I can pick up behind myself, but you said you wanted to serve me. Where are you? Somewhere getting an autograph. I walk out of the pulpit, you come up, supposed to be getting my things, and you're practicing your message in the pulpit. Sit down somewhere. Pressure comes to birth obedience out of you. Hebrews 5, 8 says, though he were a son, yet learned he obedience through the things that he suffered. Even the son of God had to suffer, had to learn obedience. Glory, glory, glory. Pressure comes to birth. Excellence out of you. Put into practice, Philippians 4 9 says, what you have learned from me, what you have heard and saw and realized. Do that and God who makes everything work together will work you into his most excellent harmonies. Another one, pressure comes to bring your visions and dreams to birth. Okay, there's a word mishber and a word nephel in the Hebrew. Nephel means to bring to birth prematurely. Or it's like when someone gets, a, gives an, a, gets an abortion, it happens prematurely before time. It's an untimely birth. Then there's a word mishber, which means to bring to fulfillment in the fullness of time to bring forth. There's another Hebrew word, yalad which is what, I, what the leaders are, your midwives to help you get into your purpose, get into the lane of your destiny, amen. And so Jeremiah 29, 10 and 11 says, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you in causing you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts. It's Mahashaba or Mahashabeth. I know the thoughts. The thoughts here, Mahashabah, Mahashabeth means intentions or plans. For I know the intentions that I think toward you, saith the Lord. Intentions of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. That word expected end means tikva. It means to bring the thing forward that you long for. All the hell that you've been through is to bring forth the thing that you've asked for, that you've prayed for. It's coming. I can feel it in the air. Amen. Let's go back to Isaiah 66 again. Isaiah 66, 9. Everybody's been all in my messages, so I'm just confirming what they've said. Shall I bring to birth and not cause to bring forth, said the Lord? Shall I cause to bring forth and shut the womb, said thy God? Then I looked up the same verse in the message. Tickled my innards, as they would say down south. It says, do I open the womb and not deliver the baby? Do I, the one who delivers babies, shut the womb? Philippians 1, 6 says, being confident in this very thing, that he who began a good work in you is faithful to complete it. Faithful.
to complete it. When you get pregnant, there's some things you can do. There's some things that you used to do that you cannot do. Some foods you used to eat, you cannot eat anymore. You cannot tolerate it. Some places you used to go, you cannot go anymore. You used to be out in the nightlife, be out shopping all the time, and you have to lay up and put your legs up. There's a shifting when you become pregnant with visions and dreams. You cannot do everything that you used to do. Sometimes you might used to eat at every restaurant. God says, fasting time. For this thing that you've asked me, you've got to fast and pray. Or you might be fasting and praying. He says, fast and pray more. For this thing that you ask me. Jesus says some things only come out by fasting and prayer. You might need to change locales geographically. You might need to change uh, uh, places within the city. You might need to cut some friends, cut some family for this vision and dream to come to pass. Everybody can't go into this next season with you. Your body's expanding to fit the baby. Some people have morning sickness. Some people faint. Some people feel fine. So everybody is different. But you must keep the dream alive. You must keep the vision fresh. I asked God, I said, give me a simple definition for dreams and visions. He said, a dream is a vision while you are asleep. A vision is a dream while you are awake. We were in Chicago one year, and we met some young men that had been delivered from the bloods. And their motto, what they live by, and if they don't obey it, they'll die by it. And it's called the five Ps. These five Ps go like this. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. This is the game law, the game principle that they live by. What's going on with the church? Why aren't we following these same principles? We have poor performance, poor performance, not even seeking excellence. We need to live by the five Ps. Pressure comes to establish you. Hebrews 13, 21 says that he will make you perfect in every good work to do his will. Working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be all glory, all honor, and all praise. Let me read this last scripture. Habakkuk 2, 3. Go to it if you would. Habakkuk 2, 3. Habakkuk. <laughs> Uh, for the vision is yet for an appointed time but at the end it shall speak and not lie though it tarry wait for it because it will surely come it will not tarry any of you who are good students I love to go into the Greek and Hebrew which you can tell that today I looked up vision and it's the word chazon, C-H-A-Z-O-N. The chazon, the vision. The dream while you awake is yet for an appointed time. Appointed time is the word moed, which means time and season, a place of meeting. So the vision cannot come before time. There's a specific place of meeting that it has to occur. But at the end, the word end is the word het. K-E-T-S, which means the end of the process. But at the birth, at the end of the process, it, not the person, but the vision itself, what God is giving you once he brings it to pass, oh, it'll show up and it'll show you all by itself. You don't have to do anything. If God spoke it, he'll allow it to show out. The word says he let none of Samuel's words fall to the ground. Now I'm almost finished. <laughs> and so the chazon, the vision, is for a moed, a time and a season. But at the hats, at the end of the process, it, the puch, 
shall speak, it shall pork, it shall speak and not lie. The 